All right, so today we're gonna be talking about the Sony a7R4, how I set it up for video, how I edit my footage, and even give you guys a couple of free LUTs that I made for you to use on your own footage. So let's jump right in and I'll show you guys my workflow and hopefully help you guys get similar results with your own footage. Let's get started. So if you're new here, I'm a videographer based out of Nashville, Tennessee. I shoot all kinds of footage from wedding films, music videos, and even helping others grow their business with video. So if that sounds like you, hit that subscribe button below. It really does help the channel grow and help others find content like this to help them out. At the end of this video, I'll be going over color correcting your footage in the edit and the LUT I made for speeding up the color grading process. There's a Dropbox link in the video description below to download the two free LUTs that I'll be using in this video. I made them for you guys to just speed up your process and to help you out if it's your first time using HLG footage. All right, and with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. To start things off, the picture profile I use on my R4, no matter what I'm filming, is called HLG2. I know a lot of times when you hear people talk about Sony cameras, you hear them talk about S-Log, more specifically S-Log3. I've noticed after comparing the two profiles on multiple different shoots from music videos and weddings that HLG2 is a lot cleaner on this camera. That has a lot to do with this camera only recording in 8-bit and having such a low bit rate. Now, I'm not saying you can't use something like S-Log on this camera, but when you're shooting something really fast-paced with a lot of mixed lighting situations like weddings, HLG2 is a good mix of quality and dynamic range. HLG2 gives you a flatter image than video straight out of camera, but not as flat as S-Log. So you have the flexibility in your footage without having to work as hard or having to be as experienced as you would to get S-Log how you'd want it to look. So let's go ahead and get started with setting up the camera for shooting an HLG2 and jump into the menu of the camera. All right, now that we're in our camera, to select HLG2, we wanna go into the main menu of the camera and scroll over to color, white balance, and image processing. Uh, which is menu 12 of 15. And then we're gonna scroll all the way down to the picture profile tab. So just like this here, scroll down, picture profile. And I've already got mine set on picture profile 10, but you're gonna scroll down until you get the picture profile 10 and then press right on the control pad. Now for here, for my black level, I'll leave that at zero. Uh, but for my gamma, this part's important. I changed that to HLG2. I feel that HLG2 has a good mix of highlight recovery and shadow detail, so that's what I have there. Um, for my black gamma, I go in here, I leave that range at middle and uh, the level at zero. Then we'll go back. For the knee, leave that in manual mode um, and I don't really change anything in there. Then for color mode, which is important as well, that one will need to be changed to 709. For the rest of my settings, I just leave them right there where they're at at zero. I don't change anything else in this menu here. So now we're gonna move right over to movie menu one and go down to select file format. So what I put for here is I keep mine in XAVC S 4K. Um, it's just the only way you can get 4K on here. Obviously if you go down to HD, that's 1080p. So I just keep mine in the 4K there. And then for my record settings, I keep mine at 24 frames a second at 100 megabytes a second. So that's the highest quality you can get right there. You can shoot at 30 if you want to. My preference is 24 frames a second. So I put that right there. And then for the slow motion or S and Q, we're gonna go into S and Q settings, click right there. And just to match my uh, normal footage, the non-slow-mo, I'll put the record settings in 24 frames a second. And then the frame rate, I keep mine at 60. Um, I feel like there's just a lot better quality there than the 120. You can go up to 120 as you see, uh, but for 60, uh, you get 21 megabytes a second. And for 120, it drops down to 12. Neither one of those are great, but I just keep mine in the 60. So I have a little bit more flexibility when I'm grading it with the rest of the footage. All right, and for the next step, we're gonna wanna go to movie three menu, and we're gonna go down and select the marker display on. So let's go over here, marker display. We're gonna turn it to on, and then we're going to set that up. So we're gonna go into marker settings, and I have mine in a 235 to one. If you saw the intro clips at the beginning of this video, the really wide aspect ratio where you'd see like black bars normally on some of the wedding films and different kind of videos, that's how you achieve that here. 
So what this does though, it just puts markers up on your display. It doesn't actually cut the footage. It just shows you a guide frame of what's in frame if you cut it to that aspect ratio. All right, so moving right along, we're gonna scroll over to display and auto review one menu. So let's go out of here. Gonna keep going over. There we go. And then we are going to go down and go to zebra settings, zebra display, and we're gonna cut that on. And then how I set mine up is 100 plus. What this does is it puts white and black stripes or zebras over part of your monitor showing if you are overexposing part of your frame. With the zebra set at 100 plus though, they are showing up only when you are clipping or losing the detail in your highlights. So when you see the zebras pop up, you most likely will not be able to save that part of the footage and it will just be very bright and just show pure white in your footage. I like this though, because it just gives me a little safety check by quickly glancing at my monitor and seeing if my highlights are going to clip and lose detail. And lastly, there's one last thing I like to set up when I'm shooting an HLG2, and that is the view assist. What this does essentially is put a LUT or a correction over your monitor, not your footage, just your monitor, to let you monitor and expose your footage without being in the flat profile. So we're gonna go to the setup one menu, scroll down to gamma display assist and turn on HLG. 709. So let's go over there now. Oops, there we go. Gamma Display Assistant. I'm going to scroll. I've already got it set up here, but you'll just scroll down to you see HLG. And they have HLG 2020, but you just want to make sure you set it in HLG 709. And that's it for the setup. It's pretty straightforward and simple on this camera. And another thing I love about this profile is it's pretty easy to expose your footage. One thing I've found over shooting weddings the past few years and using this profile is that you don't really have to underexpose or overexpose your footage to get a good look. I found it's easiest to just go ahead and normally expose everything. Zero out your footage on the back with the multimeter. Since we don't have waveforms in this camera, the multimeter is one of the easiest ways to keep your footage looking consistent while you're shooting. I rely on the multimeter a lot when I'm shooting something run and gun like a wedding. And it's worked really well for me over the years. But you do have to change your metering mode depending on the subject you're shooting. If you press the function mode on the back of your camera, it will pull up a quick menu and allow you to change your metering mode really quickly. A simple rule I use when determining my metering mode at a wedding is I will only keep it in a multi-metering mode if I've got a big wide shot of my couple and they're not filling up the majority of the frame. But if I'm shooting something like details or a couple session or anything up close, I put it in spot metering mode and even adjust that to a large spot meter on the camera so that I can pull the exposure off of something like their forehead or the item, like say like the ring that I'm shooting. To do this, you simply take the little circle that pops up on your monitor and move it until it's on your subject's face or if your subject is something again like details like a ring or shoes or anything during the day that you're shooting, you set that little circle right over your subject and you just adjust your exposure until that meter at the bottom reaches zero. It'll go up and down, it'll show negative and positive. You just wanna zero it out right at zero. So that's how I set up my Sony a7R4 for video and how I expose HLG2. Now let's jump into Final Cut Pro and I'll show you how I correct and grade my footage. If you're coming from shooting video on your camera without a picture profile turned on, the first time you import your footage into the timeline can be a little bit intimidating, but I promise it's super simple and you'll pick it up pretty quick. All right, so now that we are in Final Cut Pro and have our footage imported and in our timeline, there's a couple steps you wanna do first because it can be a little bit scary when you first import HLG footage if you haven't worked with it before. So this is just some footage from a recent wedding I just shot. And the first step, when we get it in here, as you see right here in the inspector here on the side uh, with your imported footage, it looks, it looks okay, but it's still a little dull. But then when you drop it down in your timeline, you get this. Everything looks blown out. You know your footage didn't look like that when you shot it. Nothing is wrong here. And when you first import your HLG footage into a new timeline, if you haven't worked with HDR footage before, it will give you a little pop-up telling you that you're importing HDR footage into a normal Rec. 709 timeline, something around those lines. It's not a problem at all. What we want to do is we want to just uh, click down on the timeline here and hit Command A, just so we can select every bit of our footage when we first get it in here. Then we're gonna go right over here and we're gonna go to this info tab. Mine is already on the settings tab, but you want to go down here and click settings. 
And what you need to look for is color space override. When you see that, we're just gonna click there and hit Rec 709. Bam, already so much better. And that should look a lot like what you saw on your camera when you were shooting the footage. Obviously what you saw looked a lot better because you had that HLG assist on that I showed you earlier. So it looked a lot more saturated, had a lot more contrast to it. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the steps of getting that footage to look like that and still having the dynamic range that we wanted uh, from shooting a flat profile like HLG. All right, so we're just gonna get started over here on clip number one. So click your clip. And to begin this process, we're just gonna go over here, click right there, and we're gonna pull up, you can pull up color wheels, there's different ways to do this. You can do the color boards if you like the color boards. I find it easier to do the color wheels. This is the simplest way I've found to do it. Another thing we want to do, once we get that click, mine's already up right over here, this inspector here. But what we wanna do is we wanna go click on video scopes, show video scopes. So mine were on, so it just turned them off. So we're gonna click on that again and click video scopes to bring it up. And then view, I click on the two right here. So there's different layouts you can have to show different, amount, different amounts of information. I click the two. I turn my first one onto the vector scopes. And then I turn this next one onto my waveforms. And that one's really important, especially when you're dealing with this HDR footage. You wanna know where your highlights need to stop at, where your shadows need to stop at, and where your midtones are setting. So now that we've got that pulled up, we're ready to go ahead and start editing. And there's some guidelines to follow, obviously with any kind of video project. A lot of it's just up to you and what you feel like creatively looks the best. But there are some kind of rules to kind of play by, especially when you're in that Rec. 709 color space, to keep your footage from just falling apart. So what I like to do, I like to start with my shadows. I don't think this really matters here. You can start wherever you really want to. But I like to start with my shadows. And we're gonna just start by bringing in some contrast into the footage. I come over here on this side of the circle for your uh, color wheels. This is your luminance. This is your saturation right here. And this is where you can add a little bit of color. Like if you wanna add a little bit more orange tone to the clip, um, you can add a little bit more orange to the shadows or a little bit more blue to the shadows. Um, just different kind of things. And you've got that set up for shadows, highlights, and your midtones here. So again, we're gonna start with the midtones and I just pull mine down and how I like to do it is when I start hitting that zero bar right here over on the side on my uh, Luma, I try to get it right here around this zero. When you start going below that, you start losing information on the screen. You can go a little bit below it. I actually do a lot of times, especially if it's something black. If it's not black, I don't like doing that just because it's gonna make that color fall apart a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna bring mine down right around that zero there. Again, if you got something black, you can bring a little bit below, and it just adds that contrast into those, uh, those shadows there. Then on the highlights, my highlights are pretty good right there, but I wanna, you wanna bring those up to 100. When you start getting above 100, it's going to start falling apart and just showing like pure white. So we're gonna stay right here around 100. And then the midtones, just kinda depending on your lighting and stuff here, you wanna get your skin tones right. And so, you can bring that, you come right down here on the midtones on this color wheel here, and you can go down, obviously, which that just, it's, you can see over here, it's just bringing it a little bit too dark. You kind of want to want these to set around uh, for like a lighter skin tone. I like to set mine right around the 70 mark, maybe 75. And so for me, I'm going to bring this up, and I think that looks pretty good right about there. And how to really just set this off is we want to go in and add our saturation back. So we're going to go up here, and I like to raise this saturation up. And that's pretty good right there. And an easy way to, he was a little red in the face right here in this clip. So you don't have to do this part, you won't always need to, but when you add that saturation in, maybe you even wanna go back to the midtones, just kinda of focus on those skin tones right there. Bring your saturation in right here on those midtones. But if you start getting someone that's a little bit too red, an easy thing to do is you can go up here and then you can go down and scroll to hue, saturation, curve. And one just easy way to take care of this, you wanna be very subtle with it, but you wanna come up here and click this little color picker. Click on the, on the tone giving you a little bit of trouble and just click and drag so it gets a good area. And then it shows you right here, it's popped up a little line right here and you can click there and just kind of drag down. Like the key is subtlety because depending on the bit rate of your footage, you can make your footage fall apart and it'll look really pixelated and blocky. So just really subtle, just pull those reds down there and there, you've got a good look. This isn't a creative look, but you've got it back to that normal color. So, and then I'll just show you, this is the 
This is what it looks like after. So after we just got done editing and this is the before. So big difference there, it's already looking great. And you can take it a step further. You can make it a little bit more contrasty by separating those highlights and shadows a little bit more. If you like more saturation in your footage, you can, you can dial up the saturation there. There's all kinds of possibilities to achieve the look you like. Now, as you saw in the title, I am gonna be giving away some free LUTs in here. So I've tried to make this easier for people just getting started, especially if you've never shot HLG before. Again, this can just be a little bit daunting trying to uh, go, go from not color grading to having to color grade and color correct your footage every single clip when you pull it in. So what I made, if you follow what I said earlier about exposing everything at right at zero, especially like your subject, if you've got that person in the frame, zero and everything out, this LUT should work pretty good for you. And you can tweak it too. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on our piece of footage here and we are gonna go right over here to the effects tab. We're gonna bring that up and we're gonna go down to color, custom LUT, and we're gonna drop that on our footage. And what I've made for you is a LUT to get this back in that Rec 709 color space. And I also made you one to give it more of a creative style. That's, that's the look that I like for my weddings. I'm gonna give you guys that today just to help you out. So let's start with the Jordan's Easy HLG LUT. So this just gets it to that normal color like we did on the first clip. So we're gonna put that on. And already, you can see a big difference there. Got your normal colors. And let's just go ahead and do that again here. We're gonna drag one over. And we're gonna go to Jordan's Easy HLG LUT. And bam, and on some of these you'll see, like if the lighting wasn't quite right or anything like that, you'll see you need to adjust your shadows and your highlights and maybe even your saturation. But if everything's perfect, like see this clip here, like I was saying, this clip is probably a little darker than I should have exposed it. So it kind of looks a little bit dark in the, in the footage, even with that HLG LUT on there. But it's easy to fix. Click on your clip there, you've put your LUT on. We'll go again right over here to the color wheels. And what we're gonna do, the shadows look pretty good. We've got those right here starting to hit at zero, but our highlights are pretty low. And we've got a white wall back there, so we know that's gonna be pretty high on up there. So we're gonna bring that up. And so that's looking a lot better. It's added more contrast back to the footage, but her skin just still looks a little bit dark. So we're gonna go to these midtones here on this wheel here, and we're just gonna bring those up a little bit, just like that. And again, if you want to add a little bit of saturation, you totally can. Um, like I showed you earlier, if it's a little bit too red in the skin tones, we can go right back to that hue and saturation uh, curves. We can go to the color picker here, and we'll just pick the part that looks a little bit too saturated and just bring that down just a little bit there. Looks great. So, and again, just to kind of show you on some different footage, let's go to that custom LUT again, drag that onto our footage. Come right back here and Jordan's Easy HLG LUT. Bam. See, that's just an easy way to get you looking good. Now, I've made one more thing for you guys. So, let's click on this footage here. Let's say, okay, that's great. I've got my footage looking normal, but I'm having a hard time getting a creative style. Let me give you guys a creative style to start with that you can tweak and build upon. Or if you guys just want to use it for your final look for your wedding films, I feel like it's a beautiful look uh, for stuff like weddings, and it's an easy way to speed up the process. So let's go ahead and drag this custom LUT back onto our footage. And this creative one I made for you guys is called Jordan's Easy HLG2 Wedding. So we'll drop that on there, and you can see it just affects a lot more of the colors. It's not your normal, just what you would see in camera, just a lot more of a creative styling to it. So we've got that there. And let me just show you guys a before and after again. So that's the after, before, after. And let's go over here and try it again. So we're gonna drag that custom LUT over, drop it on that footage there. Then we're gonna go to the Easy HLG2 wedding. And there we go, look at that. Great clip. Again, you wanna go into the, if you wanted to go into the mid-tones or anything like that and just kind of lighten the skin like here or darken the skin or bring down the highlights. It's not gonna be perfect for every clip. I tried to get it as close as I could for a good happy medium that would work on the majority of your footage if it's exposed properly. Uh, but it's just not always gonna work. There's different lighting scenarios and that's the beautiful thing about being able to tweak it.
So let's just drop another custom LUT on our clip one more time. Go over here, drop that there. Now we're gonna go up. And let me just show you, here's the first one again. So this is just getting it converted back to those normal colors that Rec 709 like we were talking right here. So that's the normal colors there. And then when you put on the wedding LUT, bam, there's the difference you get out of that LUT there. It's really good looking and clean, and it just makes it simple to drop something on your footage and be able to have it 90%, if not all the way where you want it to look, so you can get to editing and making your films. All right, guys, and that's pretty much it. It's as simple as that. Again, don't be afraid to build on this. Take these LUTs and build on those. Start from scratch, go into those color wheels, and just play around. If you mess up something or if something doesn't look quite right, you can always move it back if you can't figure out exactly what you did. And just hit that undo button, hit command Z, you'll undo it, you can start right again. So I'm gonna go ahead and export these clips and show a few of them, just not in a screen recording so you can see what it looks like, see the LUT on the footage. And what I'll do is some of these I'll put with the Easy HLG LUT and some of them I'll put with the Easy HLG Wedding LUT. And I'll put that on the corner of the footage so you can see which one is which, and that way you can see what the exported footage would look like just dragged and dropped on there. I won't do any kind of tweak into it. You can just see what it looks like with the LUT dropped on top of it if you were to export it from there. All right guys, so that's the best way I found to set up my Sony a7R 4 for video and wedding films. Again, I'm gonna have a Dropbox link down in the description below for you to download those two LUTs for free. I did make these LUTs to work with my HLG2 workflow, and they might not work too well with other profiles in the camera, but if you're shooting with the settings that I showed you, they should drop onto your footage very well. And the final step is to just go out and test this out for yourself. Let me know down below if this helped you out at all and how it's working for you. Again, if this video was helpful, hit that subscribe button down below and let me know in the comments if there's any videos you'd like to see in the future.